Hello and welcome. Well, we are deep in the bowels of the European Parliament here in Brussels and quite frankly, we are bamboozled by the pantomime performances going on in Westminster. Now, if you didn't already know, Parliament has been prorogued, the Prime Minister has failed not once but twice to call a general election and apparently the government might do a deal with the Brexit party. But is this true? Well, you'll find out. This is Brexbox. Well, joining me are my three musketeers. In fact, I have to say, it's great to see all of you. And I have been trying to think, what is the appropriate collective noun for a group of MEPs? Any, any answers? Depends which group you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've got a few interesting collective nouns, so let's say the Lib Dems and the Greens. Oh, because <laughs> Lib, Lib Dems are definitely a gaggle. A gaggle. A gaggle. I thought a shower. You're too polite. Oh, a shower, um, yes. Or a, shower. a blessing a of Brexit shower. MEPs. A and blessing. Yes. <laughs> and Gorgeous I don't know. Yeah. Or, or, or Louis, a mess? Yeah, well, yes, sometimes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> OK, well, let's start with the week since we last met, because it's been a, a really tumultuous week. I think everyone would agree. You know, obviously, we now know that Parliament has been prorogued. We know the Prime Minister has failed on two occasions to get a general election. And that extraordinary case where the government is now forced to hand over the documents for Operation Yellowhammer. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. really, it's been a terrible week. And, of course, Joe Johnson resigning. The government isn't having a great time. No. The, yeah, the family warfare is really interesting to watch, isn't it? You've got Johnson versus Johnson. You've got Ben versus the spirit of the Ben I yes. Labour Leave movement. Um, yeah, it's uh, the, the, it shows actually there's far too many political dynasties. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's, it's Shakespearean. Frankly, if, it, I mean, Shakespeare yeah. would have a field day <laughs> over the, the sort of uh, knavery and trickery that's going on in between families in our parliament. Yeah, um, the mischievous uh, Machiavellian yes. kind of mutterings, I yes. suppose, that are going on across. Yes. The board. Nathan, you've been you've been in the Parliament for a long time. Looking at what has been going on in Westminster, it must have surprised even a seasoned, dare I say, veteran like yourself. I don't like to think of myself as a veteran. I don't even like to think of myself as a politician, to be honest with you, because I think when we look at Westminster and we look at what, what's going on there, it has now become the people versus Westminster. And I don't want to be associated mm -hmm. with these kind of people. Mm -hmm. And it is very shocking. We live in such troubled times. And I look back through history and think, when was it ever like this? And I think, really, the only other comparison is when Cromwell had to storm in and say to them, for the sake of, of the, for the love of God, go, because you people are so useless, and they are absolutely I mean, useless. I know I laugh, but I think that's what people are, are saying to their televisions when they're watching yeah. this this. this. I'm drama. surprised there's any televisions left, because people are throwing all of the, the stuff that they've got in their lounge at them, because they're so annoyed. And there is this, this sheer anger and frustration. And, of course, you represent Wales. Now, Louis, you're up in Scotland. What, oh. what are people saying to you in Scotland about uh, Nathan's thought here about it's really the people versus Parliament? Absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, and we've got a, a particularly tricky political landscape as well with the SNP there, um, sort of stirring it up at every opportunity and, and trying to refocus the argument to make it about Brexit, but we all know at the end of the day it's, it's about pushing towards independence. I think, for me, the scary thing is that this pantomime is taking over the process and we need to stay true and, and, and remember why we voted for Brexit because I'm speaking to people that are getting kind of, you know, ticked off with the fact that it's all about what's going on in Parliament and they're making an absolute mockery of our political system. Yeah, and also I think one of the other things is that all of us here, we're watching the news as avidly as anyone else because mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. when we think we know what's happening, you don't, do you? Yeah. Changes by the hour. And I really want to, I can't wait to talk about the yellow hammer and, uh, the, you know, forcing anybody, spads, to reveal private messages. So, it's scary. So these are special advisors, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's authoritarian. Yeah. How, How does that fit in with the that? EU's GDPR? Yes. Well, exactly, that's true. <laughs> yes, that's true. Exactly. You know, I think that could be a case to answer absolutely. there. Absolutely. <laughs> no, but this is authoritarian. And frankly, look, if we're going to go down this route of saying, if you're in politics, you now have to expose all of the discussions you have behind closed doors. Mm. I can't wait to see the collusion that's been taking place between the, the Remainers yeah. to mess with our democracy, yeah. change parliamentary precedent, yeah. what burko has been saying mm. to those people who want to thwart the results, and all those people who trot over the channel to speak to people <laughs> over here. Frankly, yeah. those are the messages I want to see well, exposed. Yeah, the, and this whole getting all the yellow hammer documentation out there, I can see an argument for saying this is a government document about what might happen. Mm. 
in the event of a government decision and why there might be a case for having that published. But I can't help but think that this is being done from a position of spite. Mm -hmm. They've got their Ben bill now to block no deal, so why do they need to publish the implications of no deal if, if now it can't happen? Unless, other they than, think, unless they think there's a way around it. Other th well, unless they think there's a way around it. But other than Which I think, be. I think it's just all part of this trying to besmirch Brexit altogether, to scare the living daylights out of people that we cannot be an independent, self-governing nation. And I I think this is now coming from an act of spite, out of bitterness, and it... Yeah, it well, the I mean, fact it's so words. brazenly done that, that our MPs are so openly defying the democratic vote and trying to sabotage it, it's, it just reflects how low the depths to which our parliament has sunk, and it really does need reset. We need mm. total political reform now. People are watching it as if it's some sort of circus, and I think, I think just having a general election and putting different bums on seats is the way forward. And to be fair to Boris, he has tried to get a general twice, and of yeah. course it's been voted against twice. And of course he's then... Uh, Parliament's been prorogued, which is a normal procedure before a Queen's speech. I mean, the, the extraordinary <laughs> thing is, as we now know, the Scottish court has now said that this is illegal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Obviously, the government will appeal it. It will go to the Supreme Court. Nathan, what is your feeling on this? You know, will the government be successful or will the government be forced to reconvene Parliament? I think the government will be successful. That's my, my personal belief in this, because ultimately the Supreme Court will come down on the side of the government. But really, what Do you we... honestly believe that? Because I, yeah. I wonder whether the Supreme Court is a little bit part of that whole dynasty that Alex I, talks I about. I think that... Isn't it the establishment? What we are seeing, without a doubt, is that the establishment, it's their last gasp. It's their last attempt to stop this. This is their only opportunity through legal means, through the courts, through whatever it is, they're throwing the kitchen sink at this. But you, the, the viewers at home have got to remember one thing. We've won the war. We voted to leave the EU. Oh, no. We've won the war. These are little skirmishes and battles. This is that Japanese soldier who carried on fighting, thinking that the war was still going on, only to discover in 1973 but, but, but it was all... But, <laughs> but the sadness <laughs> here is really, actually, the politicians and, and people should know better, because all they're doing is driving a bigger divide between people in Britain. Yeah, but David, yeah. what's going to happen when the people finally get their chance to have a say? You know, they, they cannot keep on stopping a general? a general election. Yeah. It will eventually happen, and they yeah. will have their say, and they will have their revenge. But actually, Labour Party have come out today and said, we don't want... Tom Watson said, we don't want to have a general election yeah. until after an EU referendum. Yeah. I wonder why? why. I because wonder why. they know that they would hemorrhage support yeah. from the yeah. five million people who voted leave. These are MPs who want to overturn a democratic result of a referendum and not be accountable, which is why it's ending up going to courts, unelected judges. There are many countries in the world that end up embroiling their legal and court systems mm. in politics. <laughs> it's always it's dangerous. ugly. Yeah, yeah, one of the yeah. most yeah. disturbing things Ugly. that Tom Watson, I think, said was that that referendum was now null and void. And <laughs> I, I, think, I think they are relying on the more that time passes, the less um, viable that referendum result will be. And, and it just makes a mockery but of equality of it, votes. It certainly does. I mean, I represent the North West and I have a lot of working class, formerly Labour voters who are Brexiteers. They are not happy. <laughs> And, you know, yeah. Labour is going to lose those seats and that Labour will also lose, lose a vote I in Scotland. I think they've yeah, already absolutely. lost a lot of these seats, which is why they are so keen not to have a general election. Yeah. They know it. They must know. You know, when, when we go around and speak to people on the street stalls that we're doing, when we're knocking on doors with our new Pericles, you know, it's so incredible. So this is a campaigning tool, yeah. Yes, a, a campaigning tool that's um, exclusive to the Brexit Party. We, we were in Torvine. With a, for a mass action day on Saturday, and I'm telling you now, it is unbelievable the amount of people who have pledged their support to vote for the Brexit Party when this general election happens. They want, need to be very afraid. I want to have my Belinda moment. <laughs> Belinda's always referencing. <laughs> Belinda's always referencing such beautiful cultural things like Mary Poppins. Well, good luck. So, <laughs> and, and you did actually reference um, Wizard of Oz and people falling asleep in the poppy Yes, I do. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I want to know. Come I want to reference that basically. This better be good. You have got, <laughs> no, but you've got a whole cohort of MPs in Westminster playing Oz. The little man behind the curtain. Yeah. Yeah. With oh all yes, the with the boy, big voice. 
Now, so let's true. look at what happens to those people who actually have the audacity not to play Oz, but come out and say, I want to turn over the result. Yeah. And then people like Anna Subri or okay. Change UK, look what's happened to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's the yeah. dishonesty yeah. They're all of it. all having to there. deceive and, and send it, it to yeah. court and, yeah. you know, turn it into an argument about proroguing Parliament, yeah. which yeah. if Parliament is, if that is overturned and that is successful, that just means they'll come back a week early. I know, <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, and in, fa in fact, they're only yeah, missing completely. 15 days of parliamentary service, so it's not even a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. change the narrative, turning it into season. other things, and it's to avoid basically coming out and saying, we're trying to F up. Your well, results. as Hesseltine said, if I may, may, may quote him, he said, the great British public see with crystal clear clarity. We know exactly what's yeah. going on. All this delay is only to stop Brexit. I wish they'd just be honest and about also, it. And also, they come out so and say, we don't like democracy. Joins change UK. We've, we've fallen yeah. out of love with democracy. Our <laughs> and, parliament should be honest about it. And if yeah. they were so passionate, they could have cut short their, their month-long <laughs> vacation <laughs> in yeah. Pascal. Yeah. 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 I want to move on now, yeah. talk about the European Union, because we have new commissioners, Louis. So uh, there are eight new vice presidents and, and particularly Ursula von der Leyen has appointed this commissioner with a really strange title, Protecting Our European Way of Life. What is that, Louis? What is a European uh, way of uh, life? Uh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, uh, it's uh, maybe her attempt at introducing a bit of democracy into the process, but uh, we know that she barely scraped through into the role herself. So <laughs> I, 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 I can't answer that question because I just don't know. Is honest. it the right to wear lederhosen or kilts? It, it, I mean, well, what is I'll it? I'll tell you yeah. what it is. No, I'll tell you what this is, and it's something the EU have played for a long time. Concept of nation state and individualism within Europe is something they hate here mm. unless unless it's sort of bringing up a, 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 a more minority culture. so this is all then, about a federal this is e about European Union typical EU propaganda that we almost think of ourselves as Europeans mm. yeah. not British yeah. not French not German but Europeans I mean blimey but, this is the sort of thing you'd see come out of communist China but, yeah. and, and interestingly that in the UK and said can you imagine? we want to have someone protecting British culture it would be deemed racist yeah. not like that or nationalist yes, of course. not allowed would. to be from a country building. only allowed to be from the yeah. Empire of it's the, the Empire. United States of Europe again creepy and really also, creepy. just following on from that, actually, many MEPs from all different parties have called it deeply insulting, grotesque, and they feel that this... And actually, someone... Uh, this was uh, Sophia uh, in Felt. She's a Liberal MEP. She said, that isn't the whole part of being European and the whole point of being European, having European life, is having freedom? Yeah, this is not... This is a yeah, diktat yeah, yeah. against freedom. Mm. And, and the one thing that we love about Europe is the fact that it's so diverse, that you can go to France and you know you're in France, you can go to Sweden and you, and you know you're there. there and the Why do they constantly want to homogenise and pasteurise and sanitise our continent? Because borders and really democracy, they're, they're obstacles to the smooth functioning of the EU. Yeah. But, but it, it's only going to evolve. They'll look at the problems and think more Europe is the answer. Yeah. More Europe can only happen. Whatever the question, the answer is always more, more Europe. Europe. <laughs> more Europe. Whatever they want the question. no borders, yes. they want identity, the European identity to totally supersede course, the national well, But David, you, you mentioned about is this federalization? And I'm going to shock you and say actually no, it's not. Because they don't want to follow a federal model. The federal model in the United States is the states actually have control and laws and they are individual, they have their own accents, they have true. everything. That's a good point. That's true. This is actually a commission model. Mm. This is a model where 28 unelected commissioners make all of our laws, all of our rules, they decide what we do, and here in this building, we just get that rubber stamp out. Well, we don't, obviously, but <laughs> the rest of them get the rubber stamp out and go like that. Yeah. I mean, and also, you, you know, I don't know if you've seen this other title, and this plays really into our conversation. There's a VP for a stronger Europe in the world. Not a stronger Britain, not a stronger yeah. France, yeah. a stronger Europe. Again, it's part of that whole idea that they want us to become one giant continental bloc to see off what they perceive as the threats of Russia, China and America. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that just really gets my goat about the narrative here, and it's increasingly happening in the UK, where people say, ooh, if we leave the EU, we'll just become the puppet of the United States. And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Is this the same America that waded into a world war and saved your bacon? Mm. Yeah. Is this the same America who we share TV programs and films and, and music and culture who are our best friends and albeit there might be a controversial president there but are these not our cousins and do we not want to for the first time in our history say to the Americans we can't wait to hold hands and be shoulder to shoulder with you because we yeah. are the closest two nations in the world yeah. we're both big G5 economies they are the biggest super state in, in yeah. 
on this planet. Okay. Yep. Why, why would we not be proud of being equal partners with them? Because that's what America wants. Yeah. The EU wants Britain to be a diminished <coughs> little nonsense <laughs> part of their sort of grand empire-making yeah. scheme. America wants us to stand up and stand shoulder to shoulder with them. And I say, we're ready, America. Well, we and also, well, yeah. talking about standing shoulder to shoulder, there's been a lot in the press about a possible pact between the Brexit Party and the Conservatives. Um, and I think Nigel uh, then gave that as an offer and mm -hmm. said that we'd enter into a non-aggression pact, that we and would that. stand mm -hmm. down, uh, yeah, we would stand down um, MEP candidates, so PPCs in areas where they were strongly Conservative. In return, we would fight, particularly in Wales in the North West, yeah. and that Boris would be you know, come home with a thumping majority and be held a hero. However, I hear Belinda, it's all off. Is it all off? I'm not sure about that. I just, I worry that there is a still a, a certain sort of Tory arrogance out there yeah. that is going to do that sort of, well, we don't want to mess with the <coughs> plebs, we don't want to get dirtied by the whole Nigel Farage thing, and they're going to, unfortunately, confirm my fears that the Tory party just, just really is as sneering in parts as other parties, and, and, and they mustn't insult Leave voters. Yeah. They held us with such disdain, the Tory party. I was a Tory party member for 20 years. Uh, as was and, I. and I was the PPC. Hammonds and the Greaves, they turned me off. And the whole, all the let's flush out the extremists that Hammond said about MPs just wanting to honour their manifesto. Mm -hmm. That for me was a total. That the Tory Party for me had moved on to a different sphere. So I just hope Boris is sensible and has the courage to come out and say yes, we will do a deal with the Brexit voters. Yeah. yeah. You know, out there from the Brexit party. But actually, and get Brexit. Louis, I, I was pleased to see that actually Nigel had said, look, we rise above it. You know, the fact is that Number Ten or whoever it is, wherever this source has come from. We're rising above it. That the offer is still there. It yeah. still holds. Yeah. And it's up to Boris if he takes us up on it. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to need us, you know, because they haven't got the numbers. Uh, and so I think That's that... very true. They cannot win, according to the polling. Yeah, according to the polling, they can't win. They need us. I think it's just a game that they're playing at the moment. Um, but I think that it's going to work in our favour because people will be coming back to the Brexit party. We will see our polls go up yeah. because people aren't stupid out there. They know what's going on. Yeah. Final words? I would say... Well, sorry. I was going to... I want to get on, get in on this because I'm the world expert on why there needs to be a pattern. Come on, then. It's not final words. Time is short. Final lecture. No, time is short. But listen, at the end of the day, look, I was with UKIP for 10 years before um, being now in the Brexit party, and I've seen how those polls fluctuate. I've fought about 13 elections with yeah. UKIP. And it's quite clear that there is, at the moment, we 50% 50, 50 of the Tory backers who came to the Brexit party have migrated back to Boris, but we still got that 50%. Yeah. Theresa May had a 20% poll lead over Labour when she went into that snap election in 2017. Boris can barely scrape 10. He cannot access Wales. He cannot access the coal belt. He cannot access those coastal communities. He cannot access the North East. We don't compete. We complement. Yeah. And for the Tory party to come out with this venal nonsense of we are the established party, we can only govern, we won't go anywhere oh, no. near you. Frankly, they're going to turn people off because people want now Brexit yes. to be resolved. We're in a Brexit existential crisis and actually one more point 2016 Dominic Cummings is in number 10 right now doing the same as he did in 2016 and said we don't want Farage anywhere near our Brexit campaign when Farage is Mr Brexit in 2016 it worked out for Cummings you had two separate campaigns which gave shelter to people who voted Tory who backed a vote leave and would say I don't want to associate with um, the, the Farage cohort, yeah. and then the people who said we would never vote Tory, not our style, mm. we don't like the establishment, we don't like that entitlement, we're back in Farage all the way. Those two separate campaigns openly at war actually broadened our scope of support and won it for us. But in a general election, it would split the lead vote. Yeah. It has it to happen. Yeah. Have you got something I do? <laughs> <so much. laughs> I like what what really said, concerns <laughs> me is the fact that the opposition have seen that united they stand, divided they fall. They have unified. They have a Remain alliance. Yes. Yep. They've got the People's Where Vote campaign. Where is the Brexit alliance? We need that. Yeah. you telling me that anybody in Torvine are going to vote Conservative? No. No, but they're they not. But they will vote for I the like Brexit that. party. I like that. And in th Islorin, in all of these valley seats, they will vote for us. And Nigel not only said that we will step aside, he actually said we will even campaign for you. I know. Nigel will go into those seats and he will say, you know something? You're not voting for the Tories, you're voting for Boris and you're voting to get us out the EU, so hold your nose, vote for them, let's get a majority and let's get the hell out. I have to stop it there and I'll leave you with those two words, Brexit Alliance, I like that. Now, very quickly, <laughs> I really need to get cracking because I need to do something with this, <laughs> I need to pack this. Now, do, do we know what this is? Mm -hmm. 
It's what is this? That is the magic, that's the magic trunk that we all have as MEPs to put our paperwork in to take to Strasbourg. And do you know what's inside mine? I've got dual use for mine. <laughs> it sits in the corner of my very sparse office with my kettle on top and tea bags inside. <laughs> and then when I go to Strasbourg, the kettle goes inside and it gets with me because, frankly, we don't actually have many papers. Not yeah, yet. Not yet. Not yet. No. I don't want to I even do ask. I have a lot of nice tea bags. I'm so. sure you do. I, I haven't got time. What have you got in yours? Very uh, quickly. Uh, yeah, just um, flat shoes because we have to walk flat past Flat shoes. Louis, what's in yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, uh, what's in yours? Uh, uh, nothing. nothing. Yeah. Can I just say, no. can we all see Belinda's shoes? Oh, very oh, quickly, quickly, just to bring some sunshine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I have to tell you that this means that we are packing up, we are heading to Strasbourg, and we're going to see you in Strasbourg next week. But from all of us, for now, from here in Brussels, bye-bye. Anna, see you, Anna. <laughs> 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 <laughs>